Okay, so this video is to accompany you on the Delta Math assignment that you have to complete. All right, so first section, quadratic functions. The questions will look like this. Given a quadratic, y equals negative x squared plus 3. Find y given x. Okay, so if I find y, then wherever I see an x, I'm going to replace it with the given value of negative 3. I chose this one because the order is incredibly important. This negative sign does not get multiplied by this negative 3. Remember our order of operations. So I have to take care of my exponent. Negative 3 squared is positive 9. This negative out front means I take that positive 9 and multiply it by negative 1. So my final answer would be negative 6. Okay, so you just have to input the final answer. Now find x if y is equal to negative 6. Okay, so that means I don't plug anything in for my x value, but rather I replace my y value with negative 6. Okay, so I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So I get negative 9 is equal to negative x squared. I have to get rid of that multiply by negative 1. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. I get 9 is equal to x squared. Next, I take the square root of both sides. And remember, when you take the square root, two answers exist. So x could be positive 3 or negative 3. And I think the directions say separate answers with a comma. So be careful. Both answers have to be inputted for full credit. Solving quadratics by factoring. Okay, when we solve we find all values of x. Solve for x. So that means I can't plug in for x. I have to get x alone. How do I do that? I have to make sure that my equation is always equal to 0. So when I look at this one, so to get this equal to 0, I'm going to add 6 to both sides. So I'm going to move everything towards my squared term. So I have x squared minus 7x. These happen to cancel. That's fine. My equation is set equal to 0. Now I go through my factoring techniques. There's only two terms here. So my factoring technique is greatest common factor. What can both terms be divided by? An x. Once I determine the GCF, I write it and I open a set of parentheses. How do I factor it? Factoring is dividing out that common term. So x squared divided by x is x. Negative 7x divided by x gives me negative 7. So these are my two factors. Once the quadratic is in factored form, I set each individual factor equal to 0. And now I solve for x. Do not lose this. x equals 0 is one solution. And then adding 7 to both sides, I get x equals 7 is my second solution. Okay, the next two are quadratic equation of standard form. Recall standard form is ax squared plus bx plus c. So you'll just have to rearrange equations. a should be positive. It doesn't have to be, but it's easier that way. How a, and then uh, parabola a values. So it has you drag and drop according to the value of a. So remember when a is positive, parabola opens up. When a is negative, parabola opens down. And then the other thing we looked at, the smaller a gets, the wider the parabola is. So small a values make for wide parabolas. The larger the a value is, the more narrow the parabola is. So a larger a value, my parabola is sort of going to be closer together. Don't forget, when you submit an answer and if you get it wrong, they give you a detailed explanation of why your answer was wrong and what you need to do to make it right. So if you get something wrong, please read the solution that's given before you attempt the next problem. 
Okay, the next one, parabola features, you'll be given a graph, you'll be asked for the x and y intercepts, the vertex, and possibly the axis of symmetry. Remember the vertex, if a is positive, my parabola opens up, so my vertex is the minimum point. If a is negative, my parabola opens down, so the vertex is the maximum point on the graph. So if I write my vertex as an ordered pair, remember that your axis of symmetry, your axis of symmetry is the equation of a line. So a couple of you on the check for understanding, we're just writing a number, an axis as an equation. So if it asks for that, you have to write it in the form x equals whatever that, mm, let me go this way, x equals whatever that value of the x coordinate of the vertex is. Okay, and lastly, you'll be asked to graph parabolas. So you'll be given an equation, and it says on the accompanying set of ac on the accompanying set of axes, you have to graph it. You have to plot five points. So if you don't plot five points, it won't be correct. It won't even let you submit the answer. You have to include the roots and the vertex. Okay. What are your roots? Your roots are just your x-intercepts. These are the same thing. What's your vertex? We get our vertex. My x-coordinate comes from negative b over 2a. My y-coordinate, I take that x value and I plug it back into the original. Okay, so we're going to do this one together. Okay, first, let's go with what we know. Y-intercept, when my function's in standard form, the y-intercept is just 0, comma c. So my y-intercept would be 0, comma, negative 24. Maybe I should start there. Let's write the values. So a equals negative 1, that's the coefficient to the squared term. b equals negative 10, that's the coefficient to the x. c equals negative 24, that's my constant term. That's the one that's alone. Okay, so next my x-intercepts, I set my equation equal to 0. Right? I make y equal to 0 and I solve for x. When you solve using factoring, you want A to be positive. You want A to be positive. Well, in this one, A is equal to negative 1. Okay, well, how do I make it not negative? I'm just going to divide both sides of my equation by negative 1. 0 divided by negative 1 stays 0. But dividing the right-hand side by negative 1, it makes all my factor, it changes all my signs. Negative x squared divided by negative 1 is positive x squared. Negative 10 divided by negative 1 is also positive 10. Negative 24 divided by negative 1 is 24. Now I look to my factoring technique. My factoring technique, I need to find two numbers that multiply to 24 and at the same time add to positive 10. So what two numbers satisfy that? 6 times 4 gives me 24. 6 plus 4 gives me positive 10. So my factored form, x plus 6 times x plus 4. But I'm not finished here because intercepts are points. So I set each individual factor equal to 0 and solve for x. So I get x is equal to negative 6, and I get x is equal to negative 4. Okay, so my ordered pairs, because I have to graph, All right, so let's, I have my x-intercepts, I have my y-intercept, okay, so I absolutely have to graph the roots and the vertex, so now let's find the vertex. So vertex, my x-coordinate is the opposite of b divided by 2a. Opposite of b, b is equal to negative 10. A is equal to negative 1. These values come from my original. When I factored, I divided everything by negative 1, so I changed the signs on the parabola. But for the vertex, A and B have to come from the original. Okay, so I get 
Opposite of negative 10 is positive 10. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. So the x coordinate of my vertex is negative 5. How do I get my y coordinate? I go back and plug it in. But I have to be careful because I have all these negative signs. And you have a tendency to sort of lose them. So wherever I see x, I replace it with negative 5 because that's the x-coordinate of my vertex. I suggest you pause the video, plug into your calculator exactly what I have, and make sure you get the same answer I get. Okay, negative 5 squared is positive 25, times negative 1 makes it negative. Negative 10 times negative 5 is negative 50. So this gives me positive 25 minus 24 gives me positive 1. So my vertex is the point negative 5 comma 1. Okay, so these are the defining points on my graph that hopefully I can plug in there because right there that's four points already. Okay, so on the next slide, this is what the graph looks like though. The graph is only a 10 by 10 grid. So I plotted my intercepts, negative 6 and negative 4. I plotted my vertex at negative 5, 1. I put in the axis of symmetry for you guys. You do not have to include this, but I'm going to use it to find my next two points. My y-intercept is negative 24. Well, my y-axis doesn't go down to negative 24. So my y-intercept isn't a point that I can use. I need five points to graph. What do I do? Okay. Well, let's look around the intercepts. I'm not going to pick any random number. I'm going to pick the t number right next to my x-intercept of negative 4. So let me see. Let me plug in x is equal to negative 3 and get an, an output. So here's my y value, my equation. Okay. So, again, I have to be really careful. That should be minus 24. Because I'm replacing x with a negative, and I have these negative signs elsewhere. So I get y is equal to negative 9 plus 30 minus 24. So this gives me 6, so I get a y value of negative 3. So when I plug in negative 3, I get negative 3 as an output. Okay, so I'm going to plot negative 3, negative 3 there. Alright, well this is where the axis of symmetry becomes very helpful. My axis of symmetry. To be symmetrical means whatever's on one side of the line has to exactly match what's on the other side of the line. So at this point here, I'm one, two units away from my axis of symmetry. So I need to have a point one, two units away on the other side of the axis of symmetry. Now I have one, two, three, four, five points. And I, as soon as you plot that fifth point, the program will graph the parabola for you. Okay. If that's not easy for you, then just like I picked negative 3 was one point to the right of my x-intercept, let me plug in negative 7, which is one point to the left of my other x-intercept. So if I let x equal negative 7, and I encourage you to use a calculator, negative 49, plus 70, minus 24, and you'll verify that you get a y coordinate of negative 3 as well. So if you don't use the axis of symmetry, choose your points wisely, and if you go one on either side of the x-intercept, yeah. you're going to always get the same output. All right, message me if you have any questions.